All right, we're gonna start up here in front. The walk through. It does have one 12 volt battery on the unit. We have two 20 pound propane cylinders that are full, except for what we use to service the unit. On your gas regulator, it's pointed to this bottle over here. This one's already been open. It's green inside the eye. As soon as that bottle would happen to come up empty, it's gonna turn red inside that eye, indicate that the bottle it's pointed to is empty. If you have this cylinder over here already opened up, it'll automatically pick up from this so you don't lose your gas service in the middle of the night. It's still gonna show you red with the bottle it's pointed to is empty and it's having to pick up from the one on the opposite side. Then all you have to do is flip it over here, work off of that one, while you take this one off and take it down and have it refilled. There is a manual crank handle in the front door side compartment that goes through the top that will manually crank the tongue jack up or down. For any reason it won't go on its own, you'll want to check the fuse first. Make sure the fuse is good. Still won't go up or down. There is a manual way that you can crank it up or down. Some of your hitch package is already on the front of the trailer. The rest of it is sitting in front of it. On your propane cover, two little tabs underneath with a bunch of cord in between as it goes underneath the metal rack that holds it in place. But you also have the quick release at the top so that you don't have to take the bottle cover off every time you want to turn the propane on or off. We'll set it off to the side. Your front compartment here. There is a two-way light on each side of the front compartment. You turn it one way, it comes on with motion. Turn it the other way, it's on 24-7. This is your power cord for the unit. It goes on, makes a quarter of a turn. Then there's two little red LED lights blue lights on top that indicates that it has 110 power coming through it. We also have a port spray hose that hooks to your port spray back here between the two rooms and will give you cold water on that side of the trailer only. It is also prepped for a tire monitoring system. It doesn't have it installed but it is prepped for it. We're going to close that down on your front stabilizer jacks. On the off door side center has a T-handle in the center that will manually crank those jacks up or down. Both manual crank places are on the off-door side of the unit. We're going to come down to the next connection is your black tank drain, three-inch valve. It is your black water only. Both tires are air pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire cone. Lug nuts have been torqued at 100 foot pounds, that's what's recommended on the side of the trailer. Port spray is your next connection up here at the top that the little blue curly holes goes into and gives you cold water on this side of the unit. The connection right down below it is your city water connect, so that if you don't want to fill the fresh water tank on the opposite side, you can have a water hose and regulator to it. When you turn water pressure onto the hose, you have water pressure going into the unit. The connection right down below it is a black tank flush. So that while you're dumping your black tank, you get all the nasties out that'll come out, you can hook that same water hose and regulator up to it, turn water pressure onto it, it has a little aerator on the inside that spins around, cleans more of the debris, toilet paper, and stuff out of the inside of the black tank only. We also have a satellite hookup on this side over here and a park cable. One more termination valve right behind the axles is your gray water tank. It does your kitchen sink water, your bathroom sink water, and your shower water. We got the shop cord hooked to the trailer. It goes on, makes a quarter of a turn. It is a 50 amp service since it has the two airs on top. We're gonna come around to the back. It's prepped for a backup camera up top, and it's also prepped for a Lippert extendable ladder. We're going to have to owe you a tire cover. We don't have any more 225, 75, 15 tire covers with a Parkland RV on it. So as soon as they come in, we'll get you one of those. The tire's been aired to pressure, but it's not been locked on. It's been put on with a wrench. Around here to the outside kitchenette. First little black switch turns the lights above us on. It also has a 110 outlet that is GFI protected by the outlet in the bathroom. We're gonna come back to the refrigerator. The refrigerator is 110 only. It has to be plugged into 110 for it to work properly. Thermostat controls are on the right hand side. It's running about halfway through. Good and cold in the top, pretty cold in the bottom. Two extra drawers for utensils. 
pretty good sized cabinet space up above. Extra little goodies. Also has an outside sink that gives you hot and cold running water on the outside of the unit. Hot water on the left hand side, cold water on the right hand side. Before we go too far away, we're going to come back to the electric switch for the stabilizer jacks front and back. They each have their own switch. This one will run the jacks in the rear of the unit. We have a hole here on the side that is for your manual crank handle for the slide room. Three quarter inch nut goes in there and will manually crank the off door side bunk room in or out for any reason it won't work on its own. Then we have the outside grill. We're gonna pull it out. It has a locking mechanism on the front side to lock it in place when it's in travel. It also has a locking piece in the back for when you're using the outside grill. Gas holes comes down and makes to the first connection underneath the unit. For it to have gas coming from your gas bottles up front, the T-handle up on top has to be turned in line with it for it to have gas coming through it. Operates pretty easy. When you first go to light it, you turn the gas line in the on position. You're going to turn it, click it one time, sit there and let it hold for about a minute. The second time you turn it off, the next time you click it, it should light. The griddle has to be turned upside down on the outside grill for it to go back inside the cabinet. <clears throat> you also have to loosen the latch that keeps it in the out position before you try to slide it back in. Slides back into its little hole. Does have a lock for the outside to lock it in place for travel. We're gonna skip right on past that. The back door going into the bathroom area. We're gonna lift up on it. Clicks into place. We're gonna open the door fully extended. <coughs> Little blue handle on the left hand side. Unloosens the steps from the door frame. As the steps come out, it has a little push button underneath each one of the legs. 15 to 18 slots on the legs. Once it comes out and lays down in position, the main thing on the steps is it has to lay flat in the threshold. To achieve that, you have to push the buttons underneath the legs and adjust the legs accordingly. But it has to lay flat so that the door comes over the top of it without scraping. So we're gonna open it right back up. But that accesses you into the bathroom area only. We're gonna lift it back up, slide it right back up inside of itself. Clip it into place. We're gonna close the door, pull the handle over. <coughs> it does have a 110 connection on the outside of the unit and a park cable hookup or antenna hookup on this side here so that if you wanted to watch the ball game out underneath the canopy, you have a way that you can watch the ball game on the outside. Works off the park cable hookup or the antenna on top. We also have the two outside speakers. When we run the awning out, I'll show you a little bit more about the speakers. They have blue lights in the speaker part, clear lights underneath, so it puts out pretty good lighting underneath the canopy. The top connection is for the outside of the front stove, so that if you wanted to pull smoke or smells from the inside of the trailer to the outside, two little tabs on the outside have to be lapped up. Allows the flapper to flap, but when the flapper's in travel, you'll want to push them back down and lock it into position. Outside of your furnace is next. Going to suck cold air in the top, hot air out the bottom. I always suggest putting the mud dauber screen over it because that simple investment is under 15 bucks. will save you from having to pay me $45 an hour to take the furnace out and clean the mud daubers out of it. While we're here, you have the two low water drain points. The blue side is the cold side of the water system. The red is the hot side of the water system. The blue line right about four feet in front of that is your freshwater drain for draining your freshwater tank. Freshwater tank fills here, drains underneath the trailer. We're going to look at the outside of the hot water heater. Hot water heater works two ways, 110 and propane. You always want to make sure that it's full of water by popping your pop off out and see if you got water coming out of it before you light it on gas or turn the electric side of it on. Both of those switches are going to be on your monitor panel on the inside. You also have a drain plug down here at the bottom for draining the water out of the hot water heater in between trips and for winterizing. There's going to be two more valves on the back of the hot water heater. We're going to show you that when we get to the inside. Second round hole in the uh, radius metal on the front 
is for the main slide in the living room area to manually crank it open or shut if for any reason it won't work on its own switch up here in the front is for your front stabilizer jacks once you have the trailer on site level from side to side front to back you can run the jacks down this stabilizes the trailer while you're walking through the center of it here again you have the two-way light motion sensor they're on 24 7 three handles the three-quarter inch nut handle does the two slide rings <coughs> slotted handle does your two stabilizer jacks and then your little Z handle does your front tongue jack on the front of the unit in the front compartment it is also prepped for an inverter doesn't have the inverter in it but it is prepped for it and it is prepped for a solar panel right down below that if you notice on that solar panel it's showing you 13.7 that's because the 110 lines plugged into the trailer does not have the solar panel up on top but anytime you're plugged into the 110 line it will show you the 13.7 that's basically it on the outside of your unit one more thing i want to mention to you about the unit the life of the trailer is the roof anything happens to the roof up on top it will start showing on the four corners inside or out so every 90 days, I suggest going up and checking the roof. You don't have to seal it every 90 days, but at least keep a close eye on the roof because the roof is the life expectancy of the trailer. Here again, we're gonna pull the blue handle on the left-hand side, it allows the steps to come loose from the door frame. A little push button underneath each one of the legs, 15 to 18 slots in the legs for adjustment. The main thing on the steps is it has to lay flat in the threshold so that the front door fits over the top of it properly. We're going to open it right back up and we're going to step to the inside. As we step in the unit, it has a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side. We're going to go through the keys. One key does all your inside, outside compartments, your front door, your back door, lock and deadbolt. It's called key alike. So that you just have to have one key for the unit. We're going to step down and we're going to check on the monitor panel shows you that your battery is fully charged that's not really accurate to get an accurate reading of the battery you need to have the 110 line unplugged then push your battery button fresh water tank underneath the unit is drained black tank which is your toilet water is drained gray tank which will be your kitchen sink bathroom sink and shower water is drained it is also prepped for an auxiliary tank but it doesn't have the tank on it your first blue light on the top left hand side turns your water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets the second one is the gas side of the hot water heater going to turn it on hotter water still hot in the tank so it's not going to light the blue light should come on stay on for about a minute then the blue light goes off then it goes through Three lighting processes to light on gas. For any reason it doesn't light, the little door side fault light will come back on. The third blue switch is the electric side of the hot water heater. We do have water in the hot water heater, so we're not afraid to turn it on, but when it's on, the blue light is on on it. Then the fourth one is your center roll lights in the unit. Second row down to the left-hand side is your cap lights on the front of the unit. Two little sets of LED strip lights. Then you got your awning lights, it's up underneath the awning. And then it's got an auxiliary switch. The auxiliary switch is the blue light underneath the front steps. Two slide room switches. The first one on the left hand side runs your main slide room in and out. And it's always good to make sure there's not a tree on that side or there's anybody parked up against the long side of you. We've had it out here once before today, so we know we're good. <coughs> Once it goes all the way out, it's the far outside stroke, it does ratchet. it. Second one runs a bunk room slide room in and out. So we're gonna run it out. Same way with it, you wanna make sure there's not a tree back there or there's somebody parked a vehicle up close to it. Anytime it starts ratcheting, it's time to let off the switch. Here again, the third switch is for your awning. We're going to extend it out. 
we might have to close that door just a little bit to get the auto arm to get past it. So we're going to run it out. The pretty little LED lights up against the side of the trailer. I don't know if I can get it all the way out up against the building. But that's pretty far out. Once the skirt starts hanging down, each one of the arms has a pinch point at the bottom that you can pull down against, which puts the pitch of the rain from the front to the back. So we'll come out here, we'll pull down against this bottom arm, which puts the pitch of the rain coming off this back corner. Same way with the front arm, you can put the pitch coming off at the front. But when you get ready to roll the awning back up, you'll want to push it back up into the straight position so that when it rolls back up, it fits right into the cradle on the front arm and back arm. Now that we're out here, we have the two blue lights and your outside speakers, and the clear lights are down below. Pretty decorative. We're going to go back to the inside. There is a carbon monoxide and LP detector down here at the bottom. If it smells LP, it gives you one continuous buzz that will not quit. If it's carbon monoxide, it beeps at you four times, two times in a row. There is a light above the sink that has to be turned on by hand and a 110 outlet up at the top of it. On the kitchen sink, left side's hot, right side's cold. For water to come out, you have to pull back on it. We're going to put that back up. We're going to slide the sink cover right over the top of that. The top drawers for your silverware. Second drawer down has all the paperwork that's in the trailer. All the paperwork on the appliances is in the red bag. <coughs> Bottom drawer is empty. We're going to open up the outside compartment here. On the left hand side, if you take the screw out at the top, accesses you into the back of the water pump. Water pump has a one valve white one valve setup on it for winterizing that goes to a braided hose that you stick down your antifreeze jug. If you take the panel off on the right hand side, it accesses you into the back of the hot water heater. On the hot water heater, there's two white valves. Both white valves are pointed towards the water heater. Now, for the normal operating position, cold water in the bottom, hot water at the top. When you get ready to winterize, they turn sideways, which makes a loop at the back of the hot water heater so that you don't have to fill it with antifreeze when you're winterizing the unit. Up here on the microwave, I warm my coffee up in it, but you can set the time on it. Let's say it's three o'clock. Hit the clock button again to the two center eyes is solid. The only reason I set the time on the microwave is you can tell if you've left the trailer and come back to it, if it doesn't have the proper time, it's lost 110 power coming to the unit. <coughs> does have a light on the hood range for cooking and a fan. For that fan to work properly, the two tabs on the outside connection have to be lifted up. allows that flapper to flap. <coughs> Glass stove top. It's going to pull up two times up out of the way. We turn the little button on the right hand side to the top position. Illuminates the valves. When you turn them to where it says pilot on, they turn red. The extractor on the far left hand side will light all three burners up on top. <coughs> We're going to turn them right back off. On the oven, you'll turn it to where it says a little flame for like pilot. You're going to hold down on it using the same striker on the left hand side. We'll light the pilot on the oven. Let it run for about a minute, then you can dial your temperature up to whatever you want. Flip that little button to the bottom position, and you have a light inside the oven so you can see what you're baking. Anytime the valves have gas coming through them, they turn red. <coughs> the vent down right down below it is for the inside of the furnace for the cold air return. We're going to go back to the refrigerator and freezer section. Oop, there's my sodium. The connection for it is up here at the top. It has an on and off button. It turns it on and off. 
if you're checking the temperature in the freezer, it's between one and five. We got it set at four. Check the temperature in the refrigerator. We got it setting on four. And it also has a quiet mode for nighttime. Push that, the little blue light comes on. Since you're not gonna be going in and out of the refrigerator freezer as much at night, it'll put it in a mode where it runs quieter. We're gonna take it right back off of it. We're gonna come right back up here at the top. It does have an on and off button. This charge it on and off. Sometimes my old fingers is hard to operate this thing. Right down below the refrigerator is the breaker box. The breaker box is marked from the left hand side to the right, exactly what they are, with your 50 amp main being in the center. Your car fuses on the right hand side from the top to the bottom are marked exactly what they are, and they give you four spots at the bottom that are empty and one up at the top. They also have a red light on the right hand side of the fuses to indicate anytime the fuses are blown, that little red light beside it will come on. And you can also see that red light through the tinted window in the front. The brown vent to the right side of that is for the furnace. We're gonna go off into the bathroom area, which is kind of confined with the steps up, but it does have a light that turns the light above us on. We do have a white vent in the ceiling to bring air conditioning into the bathroom area. A narrowed knob on the vent above the toilet. A little black switch turns the fan on for pulling moisture out of the unit. On your toilet, it has a single foot flush on the far right hand side. And the instructions for the toilet are up on the top. They're pretty simple. Push halfway down, fill halfway full of water, do your business, push down on the pedal, dumps through the bottom and it adds more water to the tank does have a medicine cabinet above us, three drawers inside of it, and does have pretty good sized storage underneath the bathroom sink. Shire has a curtain that pulls across, does have a skylight in it for the taller guys. Hot water on the left hand side, cold water on the right hand side on all your faucets. We're going to come out of the bathroom area and go into the bunk room area. Doesn't have a light switch on the wall, but it does have a USB port. The lights in the bunk room area have to be turned on by hand. We also have another vent in the back. Narrow knob cranks it up. Little black button turns the fan on. We have a ladder for going up on the top bunk. Lifts up, slides out, locks into place. Climb up, nobody over 275 pounds up top. There is a place for the TV on the shelf. This is becoming the door and a coax cable hookup that works off the park cable or antenna on top. We have a fire escape window in the very back of the unit. Pretty simple. Grab a hold of the red tab, pulls the screen loose. Grab the red knob. Handle goes all the way through the window frame so that you can access out the very back of the trailer for any reason you can't make it to either one of the doors, the bathroom door or the front door. <coughs> The bunk area on the off door side is pretty simple. Got a little catch on each side of the bunk up on top. Loosen them up, allows the bunk to come down. Light above it has to be turned on by hand. And the cushions down on the bottom can fold out and make another bed for down there. Not too bad. We're gonna go right on past that. We're gonna come back up into the kitchen area. The light above the table has to be turned on by hand. Has a little push button in the center of it that turns it on and off. Tabletop comes off the two pedestals, goes between the two benches down below. The two back cushions come over the top of the table to make a smaller bed there. Light above the couch has to be turned on by hand. Has pretty good sized storage up above it. Each one of the windows in the main slide can be used as a fire escape too. The windows open up pretty far. We're going to slide it back over. We're going to pull that shade back down. Couch will butterfly out into a bed. In the couch area, there is another USB port on the side of the wall between the kitchen table and it. Charging of cell phones, CPAP. Two remotes for the unit. The bigger remote turns the TV on. 
if I'm not mistaken, it got 42 channels on the TV the other day when I did the auto scan on it. That's about an 80 mile an hour away from here channel. Little black cord pulls down, loosens, allows the TV to come out. You can tilt from one side to the other. You can watch it while you're washing dishes. You can watch it while you're lounging on the couch. Either way you want it to go, when you run to slide it back in, it should click into place. It does have a little remote. I'll turn that TV off. The little remote turns the stereo on and off. On the stereo, you have zones one and two. Zone one is inside here, so we're gonna turn it off. Zone two is your outside. It will also play a DVD between the stereo and TV. You have to use the stereo remote to control the DVD player. TV player's just done with this one here. Then your speakers, zone one is inside, zone two is outside. We'll go ahead and turn it back off. There is pretty good size storage underneath it for DVDs other things in there when you're running the main slide in and out the only thing you really have to watch that could catch on the slide room is this cabinet door right here if there's too much stuff in the cabinet door and it comes a jar it can be caught on that slide room but you're standing right here beside it you can look down to make sure it's closed before you operate it we're going to come back to the thermostat which controls the thermostat in the living kitchen area we're going to turn it on gives you your fan speed low fan speed high we're going to go to cool cool low cool auto cool high you'll dial your temperature down for it you hit that mode button one more time it should say heat in the lower right hand corner dial your temperature up for it hit that mode button one more time and it should say off in the lower right hand corner so we're going to go right back and turn that right back on in the bunk area or master bedroom area the master bed slides from side to side the controls for it latches on the right hand side underneath pull it there's a handle on either side of the bed so you can slide it either way you want it to go there is a 110 outlet on either side of the bed the all four lights in the bedroom area have to be turned on by hand there's another place for a tv in here 110 outlet to plug it into, part cable or antenna hookup. On the off door side window, there is another fire escape in the master bedroom area. We have pretty good size closet space on either side. Pretty good size storage space up above it. The two lights above the head of the bed have to be turned on by hand too. The remote to the right hand side of the bed runs the air conditioner in the bedroom only. The air conditioner in the bedroom vents through the round vents in the ceiling, but it also has the quick cool downs on either side that you can let all the cold air come down into the master bedroom area, which will freeze you out. So once it gets good and cold in here, you might want to flip them back closed, pushing the cold air through the round vents in the ceiling. It does have a heat vent on the door side in the floor for bringing heat into the master bedroom. That is basically everything on your trailer. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. And thank you for your time.